So in this video, we're going to explore how waves interact with each other. So as, as many wave videos have started, Sal has a string. And um, here's Sal. I decided to familiarize myself with the drawing software by, by doing my best to, to trace a picture of Sal. I'm not. I'm not sure how he would how he would feel about that, but handsome man, handsome man. But anyway, he has his string and he jerks the end up and then he jerks it back down. It creates this wave pulse moving along the string, just like just like in his past videos. But this time. I have the other end of the string, and I also jerk it up and jerk it back down and create my own wave pulse, this red wave pulse moving to the left. So these wave pulses are going to move toward each other as we go through time until we reach a point that looks like this. Here's the flat string, Sal's blue wave. Sal's blue wave pulse and my red oops not doing that my red wave pulse and they're moving toward each other so what happens here when they when they right when they interact at this green point well we know that normally this wave is moving along because this this point here drawing another green point here feels the bit of string just to the left of it has moved up and so it gets pulled up by the by the piece of string to the left since since they're connected and 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 once it goes up it'll pull the string to the right of it up and that's how the wave moves along the the pieces of string pull each other upward in succession so for this piece of string it not only feels the string to the left of it pulling up but also the piece of string to the right of it pulling it up so it actually gets pulled up harder than than the other strings do and in fact um, twice as hard because there are two when these waves have completely interacted with each other they're right on top of each other we end up with something that looks like this it's just a bigger, bigger bump in this state where the the string is flat, and then in the middle it has this large bump when two two wave pulses are on top of each other. So what happens after this point? Well, let's think about this point on the string again. This piece of string here, right in the middle, same one as before. It'll fall down. Once it's stretched up to its to the peak, the peak of its height, its peak height, it will it will fall down. And as it falls down, it'll it'll reach it'll reach back where it started before the the pieces of string to the right and to the left of it, because it's it's the first to fall. It's the first to be flung up, the highest, and then it'll fall down. <clears throat> fall down first, and so. We end up with something that looks like this. My wave pulse again moving to the right, and Sal's wave pulse. I won't redraw that one. Sal's wave pulse moving to the right. Mine's moving to the left, Sal's is moving to the right. Not sure if I said that correctly. But anyway, so what's happened here? We started with waves moving toward each other. They they interacted for a while, and now it looks just like as if my wave is continuing as if nothing had ever happened, and so is Sal's wave. So the waves have survived, and they're continuing on just as if nothing ever happened. But in the middle, they interacted to make this to make this bigger bump than the two moving wave pulse bumps here. So this the takeaway here. Is that that I've just that I've just stated, but I'll state it again. Is that when two waves are on top of each other, they add together. 
into this bigger wave wave pulse or this this bigger bump in this case. And then once once they would continue on, they continue on as if nothing happened. And this is called interference. This is the name that people have used. Interference. I spelled that wrong last video. Interference. In this specific type of interference here where we have two waves that are that where the pieces of string are moving in the same direction, they're both moving up in this case. This is called constructive interference. Constructive interference. And then I'll just draw just to summarize what we've what we've what we've seen here. So we have Sal's blue wave moving this way to the right. And then we also have my red wave pulse, both wave pulses. Mine's moving to the left. Add them together, and we end up with, with, with a taller bump. They interact and they add together. And just to, to reinforce this, this point, let's do a, a slightly different example. And I'm going to abandon Cell. Goodbye. But Sal's still here, even though I dragged him out of the picture. And he takes his string. And as he is prone to do, he... I'm going to move over more. Whoops. He takes his string, and he jerks one end up, and he jerks it back down. And when he does that, he creates this wave pulse. His friendly blue moving to the right wave pulse. But this time I do something a little different. I jerk it down before I jerk it back up. So I end up with, with a wave pulse where the bits of string are moving in the opposite direction to Sal's to the to the bits of string in Sal's wave pulse. So just like before, these wave pulses are going to move toward each other. I'm gonna color here. Until we get to the point where they're just they're just touching. They haven't interacted yet, but they're this this bit of string in the middle is feeling both feeling the effect of both wave pulses. I should be consistent and draw my arrows over them. So this this piece of string so before this piece of string felt the piece of string to the left and the piece of string to the right of it both going up, so it got pulled up twice as hard. But this piece of string feels the string to the left of it going up, but the piece of string to the right of it is going down. So so this string and this piece of string, instead of going upward twice as hard, it actually doesn't go anywhere. The the forces offset each other and it just stays put. And so if we continue through time, we end up with this kind of situation where the string is completely flat. And here's our here's our center point here. It still hasn't gone anywhere. And the whole the whole string is flattened out. So what's happened here? Have these have these two wave pulses since they had their pieces of string moving in the opposite direction, have they have they just destroyed each other? Or is something else gonna happen? Will will something happen where these you know, they, they re-emerge and continue on as if nothing happened, like in the previous example. Um, which which is the case, or is it something completely different? At this point, I'd encourage you to, to pause the video and think about what's happening to all these different pieces of string and, and try to predict what it's going to look like in the next piece of time. So now that you've had time to, to think about it and have a guess at, at what we're going to see. Let's think about what's going on here. So what had to happen between this this time and this time? These pieces of string that are that are that have moved up have to move back down to get to flat, right? So these pieces of string are moving down. And once they get here, they're still moving down 
they're flat for the moment, but they have momentum and they continue moving on, moving downward. In the same case for these pieces of string, except they have to they move down before and they have to move back up to get to the even. So these these pieces of string are moving up. And so in the next piece of time, we have the pieces of string on the right have moved up and created this new wave pulse that's moving that way, just as if Sal was right here jerking this wave up, or jerking this string up, it's created a new wave pulse. And similarly on the other side, there's a wave pulse that looks just like my previous wave pulse, as if I just jerked it down. So again we have this case where the waves come toward each other, they, they interact on top of each other, and then and then they continue on as if nothing had ever happened once they pass each other on. And this is this is another kind of interference. This is called destructive interference. Destructive interference. They've they've destroyed each other for this moment in time. Destructive. And just again to summarize what's happened here. Sal's blue wave pulse with the pieces of string moving upward. My wave pulse with the pieces of string moving downward, and the wave pulse is traveling to the left. We add these together, and we get a flat string. And so, in both cases, the the wave pulse is added together. Here, there, the pieces of string are moving in the same direction, so they moved even further in the same direction. And here, they're moving in opposite directions. So they ended up actually canceling each other out, and the wave was, was flat, or the string was flat for that period of time. And this, and these are, these are sort of simple examples, just with the, the one bump wave pulses. But, but you could, this, the same, the same principle applies for, say, say, you know, say Sal made two wave, a wave pulse that consists of two bumps. Maybe something like this, and then and then what I made so I made another wave pulse. Maybe I just made one one big. I moved my string up and down slowly, and then we could add these together, and and we would get something something that looked sort of like this, right? At each point, they've added to each other, and 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 this um. We can do other examples in other videos, but for now, I just want to illustrate the point or make it clear that 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 this is a, a general concept that happens no matter what what the shape of the waves are. It's easy to, to to illustrate them with these simple examples, but you can apply it to to any any shape of of wave pulse or continuous wave or anything like. <coughs> excuse me, did so well without coughing this video, but. Um, Oh well. Uh, anyway, see you in the next video.